All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's webinar, Medical Chart Reviews and Chronologies, Get the Full Story. This webinar is hosted by Medical and Life Care Consulting Services, a case management and nurse consulting firm headquartered in Massachusetts. We're excited that you've joined us for this presentation. My name is Gigi Liggins, and I'm the moderator for today's webinar. This webinar is anticipated to run about 50 minutes, with an additional 10 minutes provided for questions and answers. Participant audio will be on mute throughout the duration of the webinar, and we do ask that questions are submitted using the question and answer feature within the Zoom webinar dashboard. Post-webinar, we will share a link um, to where you can access an on-demand replay of the webinar along with a short survey, which we do ask that you complete. Again, we're excited to host today's webinar and look forward uh, to an opportunity to partner with you. So uh, now we'll talk about um, what the learning objectives are. For today's webinar, uh, we'll explore the differences between a medical chart review and a chronology, how to efficiently organize and review records, software and resources to help with organization, how to identify clues that point to missing information, the types of questions you should be asking, and when to seek help from a medical expert and what to expect. Our presenter for today's webinar is April Pettengill. April has over 33 years of experience as a registered nurse. She's worked in the hospital setting in geriatrics, pediatrics, telemetry, orthopedics, and for the last 30 years has been a case manager for work-related injuries and illnesses. Ms. Pettengill has extensive experience with catastrophic injuries. And in 2004, she became certified as a nurse life care planner. In 2005, she expanded her areas of expertise by attaining the Medicare Set Aside Consultant uh, certification and has been writing MS MSAs ever since. April currently works per diem for a local home health agency to keep her hands on the clinical skills and clinical skills active, excuse me. While working in the community, she has the opportunity to work with patients over the continuum of care, including high-tech pediatric patients. April is also a member of AANLCP, the American Association of Nurse Life Care Planners, since 2004, and actively working um, on the conference committees and more recently as the secretary of the CNLCP Certification Board. Uh, we're going to pass it on to Ms. Pettengill to take us through this presentation. Thank you very much, Gigi. I really appreciate that introduction. And um, I'm going to give you a caveat starting out here. Um, I'm working from home, as most people are today. Um, and you may see a cat walk across the screen, and I apologize ahead of time if that does occur. <laughs> um, so to start out, um, we're going to do a quick little poll. Um, so we're going to find out how many of you have done or are currently working on a medical chart review or chronology. So if you can answer the poll question, we'll give you a minute or so to do that. And then that'll give us an understanding of what our audience is and if this is kind of review material for you or if it's brand new stuff. I feel like I need some background music while this is going on. <laughs> All right, we've almost got everyone participating. We'll give it a few more seconds to get a few more folks to complete the poll, and then we will end the polling. In three, two, one, and here are your results. Excellent. All right, so it looks like you have, most of you have had some experience with chart review and or um, chronology. Very good, excellent. All right, so I'm going to close that out. Um, and we're going to move on, <clears throat> excuse me, to talking about the differences between the two, um, the ch medical chart review and chronology. Um, every case that involves um, an accident or an illness is going to have medical records. Um, it may be just a few, or it may be a whole ton of them, depending upon the extent of the injuries and what you're looking for. 
the medical records become an important part of the case and both sides, plaintiff and defense, rely on the, ch the medical records either to validate the claim or to question the, um, the validity of the allegations. So the records are gonna show you the timing of care, the decisions that are made, and how a person moves from one, one provider and their treatment to another. And there's always a little delay after the polls, so pardon me if we get stuck here. Okay, so what is the difference between a medical chart review and a chronology? Um, chronology is gonna tell the story. It's gonna look at what happened at the accident or when the illness began, and it's gonna move its way down through the treatment um, in a chronological order, date order. Um, a medical chart review is gonna be a little bit more extensive. That's when you're gonna actually start delving into the, um, the changes that are happening with the patient, what's going on, what the treatment is, and you're gonna be looking for red flags, which we're gonna talk about a little later on, outliers, all those kinds of things. So the way to start is by organizing and reviewing the records. So we're gonna talk about some different ways for you to do that, um, some inexpensive ways and some more expensive ways, some um, pros and cons of the different ways that you can do this. So first of all, let's talk about what is a medical record. In the records, you're gonna see treatment history. Um, we've got some examples um, on the screen here of some things you may see. Whoops, hang on, got a little excited there. Um, you're gonna look at, you're gonna see diagnostic tests, you're gonna see operative notes, you're gonna see medications, laboratory reports. Sometimes they're very nicely organized like this one, sometimes they're handwritten and you have to try to decipher what's in them. Ambulance records are Another thing that you may see if you've got an accident or someone who's been transported to a hospital setting for care. Um, and electronic health records, we're gonna spend a little bit of time on that um, just to talk about what they are and um, what to expect. So first let's talk about who creates records and who maintains the records. So, um, Anybody who touches the patient in a clinical manner is going to create part of your medical record. It could be the medical assistant, it could be the nurse, it could be the doctor or the therapist, the ambulance um, responders, EMTs, providers, those types of people. Um, so how is the information added into the records? There's a couple of different ways that that can occur. Um, some places have uh, computer programs where you enter the record, you do um, boxes, you can type in information, and sometimes it's dictated, um, and sometimes it's handwritten. So again, you're going to have to look at those, be able to decipher what you're seeing, and organize them. Um, so electronic health records. Electronic health records. So several years ago, um, the Department of Health and Human Services decided that they wanted to have medical records available um, in an electronic format so that the billing could go smoothly and that um, they could transmit these, uh, the information in a, in a safe and quick manner. And of course, immediately after all of the insurance companies jumped on board to, um, to want their records electronically if possible. So you'll find when you're looking at electronic records, especially in hospitals or in um, places where you have a provider who's connected with a hospital, you've got redundant and confusing information. You'll see pages and pages and pages of the same information. And it feels like, am I ever going to get to the information that I need. As we noted before, there's numerous people who are adding information into the records that can add to the confusion because you're looking at, is this Dr. Smith? Is this Dr. Brown? Is it the nurse? Is it the medical assistant? Um, 
Am I looking at a telephone record or am I looking at an actual office visit? Um, in, when providers have a computer-based program, often we end up with what I like to call checkbox mayhem. And what that is, is when you have a program and you have the ability to just check the answers. So you can end up with problems in terms of did this appropriate box get picked or was it an inappropriate um, box? Um, and so you have to be careful. You have to make sure that the information that is getting checked off is the right information. I'll give you a quick example. I had a case one time where um, the medical record had uh, had um, documented that the person was drinking 10 beers a day. And in reality, he drank 10 beers a year. Now, that seems like, okay, well, that's pretty easy. We'll just fix it, right? No. It went through his whole record, and it, it, it adversely affected his ability to get appropriate treatment because it now looked like they were dealing with a person who had a substance abuse issue. So it can really adversely affect treatment. Um, transcription or text-to-speech errors. Um, if you've got someone who's got a heavy accent, uh, you op oftentimes get misinformation put into the records because of the, the program not accurately understanding what they're saying. Um, you can also have issues with words that sound alike but are very different. So uh, uh, an example of that would be Xanax and Zantac. Zantac is for allergies. Xanax is for anxiety. So if the wrong medication gets documented, that again leads to some misinformation in the record. Okay, so we're going to talk about organizing the records. And there's different ways that you can do that. When you're talking chronology or medical record review or chart review, um, you're going to want to put them in date order. That's my preference is to go, you know, January, February, March, one, two, three, four, right down the line. It gives the reader a feel for how that person went through the medical care, the decisions that were made, how did they flow through that? Well, you know, when if this was done and he didn't have good response, then we went to this kind of thing. Um, oftentimes you'll see practices that like to um, sort out by providers. So then you've got Dr. Smith here and Dr. Jones here and Dr. Brown here, and that's okay. Um, and certainly you can do that. There's There's no, problem with that other than sometimes when you're reading Dr. Jones and you think, oh, okay, so he's treating along here or along here and all of a sudden you see a big gap. You go, oh, what happened? Did he stop treating? Well, in reality, he went over to see Dr. Brown and Dr. Brown saw him a couple times and then Dr. Jones saw him and then, you know, they flipped back and forth and then all of a sudden he's back to the original provider. So it may appear like you've got a lapse in treatment or something like that, but in reality, he's just gone to see another provider. Um, another really great way, and I certainly um, advocate for this when you can, is the customized Bates numbering system. Um, what that does is you put a number on the bottom of each document, and that way, when you're summarizing them, you can refer to that number, and then everybody who reads that chronology or medical chart review is gonna know the exact document, the exact page that you got that information from. You always want your organization to be clear and comprehensive. Um, you should never paraphrase or um, put the information into your words. It really should come directly out of the records. If you try to paraphrase, you may end up um, inadvertently putting misinformation in your um, in your summaries. 
that could lead to problems, you know, later on when someone's reviewing this. Um, there are two kinds of ways to organize. You can organize with software versus paper. Now, um, paper, chances are when you are requesting records, they're going to come to you in a paper format. Um, I used to get paper uh, charts and I would get boxes and boxes and boxes of charts and uh, it got really messy. Uh, it's a storage issue, um, but some people, some practices still like to have the paper and that's great. Um, I highly recommend that you scan them in to your system to make an electronic image of that and house it someplace where everybody can have access to it. Um, the reason for that is if, you know, if Attorney John's got the, the binder and you're looking for it so you can do something with it, you know, it's, he's got it, you can't, you can't find it, or God forbid your cat walks across it and you end up with paw prints all over your papers, um, you know, it's no longer a professional copy. So I prefer software and I'm going to show you a couple of options. All right, so we're going to do another quick poll question. For those of you who are doing um, chronologies or medical record or medical chart reviews, um, see if you can identify the type of software that you're using with the poll. I'm going to give you a couple minutes or a minute and a half or so to, to do that. All right, we'll give you a few more seconds to complete the polling. We're getting to where almost everyone is participating. Yay. And we'll close the poll in three, two, one. Very good, all right. So I see most of you are using Word, which is good. Okay, Excel, that's a nice option. We're gonna talk about that today. Um, access, all right, case map, yep. There are other, yes, pro proprietary ones, very good. All right, so um, I've chosen a couple today to talk about that I think um, will, are, that I think personally are very good for doing this type of work. They're not gonna break the bank for you to be able to do that. So we are gonna talk about Excel. Uh, Microsoft Excel and Access. We're also going to, I'm going to introduce you to one called the Legal Nurse System. And we're going to talk a, just a tiny bit about um, proprietary software. So, okay. So here we are with Excel. Now Excel and Access are kind of cousins. Um, Excel is primarily based on numbers. So um, if you're using Word, you have to create a table and then you're putting all of your information into the table. Um, you can sort it a little bit. You've got some functionality um, things that you can do with that. But I think with Excel and Access, it offers you a few other options that um, are inexpensive if you have Microsoft Suite. So I'm going to share with you my Excel that I created for today um, and I'm actually going to show you real quick what it looks like when you pull up an empty Excel spreadsheet just so you have an idea of what you're kind of looking at. It's coming. My computer's a little slow. <laughs> so this is what it looks like when you pull up an empty Excel spreadsheet. And if you're using it for um, number tracking, um, it looks very familiar to you. You can add in here um, your data fields that you want to capture. So I typically do like a start date and then end date. And all I'm doing is just pushing um, tab to go to the next column. 
the next one is provider. And these are typical ones that I use um, the summary. And then any comments I have. Now it looks like everything's really crowded in there, right? And how can I put all my information in? You can take a hold of the edges and you'll see that you've now have the double arrow and you can pull those fields as big as you want them to go. Okay, so that's kind of what you're looking at. I'm not going to save that. I'm going to go back to my pre-filled one so you can see. So here we have Mr. Jones. He was involved in a motor vehicle accident and um, I've entered a few small little um, medical record summaries just so you kind of have a feel for how you can enter information in here. Okay, and it kind of looks, goes along pretty good. So one of the problems that I have when they start entering information is they forget what their, um, their data fields are. So a very easy way to, um, to deal with that is if you highlight the top row, and then you go to the view tab at the top, and then you'll see over here where it says freeze panes. If you click on that, it pulls it down a drop box and you can freeze the top row. So then when you're scrolling through, that row stays right there. So you know exactly what each data field is. If you're using it for numbers, you can do the exact same thing. All right, so that is Excel. Um, and we can talk about, we're going to get into a little bit more about sorting and filtering in a minute. I just want to kind of introduce you to um, Access. Now, again, with Access, it's a finicky little thing. Um, and if you do not how to know how to write queries to run the Access program, I highly recommend you don't try. Um, but when you have, if you have uh, Microsoft Suite, or a pro, you have access as part of that. And it comes with some preloaded templates and you'll see a few here across the top. The one that I found seems to work, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty well for entering um, medical records is this one called event management. So when you click on that, it's gonna pull you up a template. And uh, again, I've already pre-filled one for you so that you don't have to go through that with me. So. Um, on the left over here, you see um, a menu. And if you wanted to add a new medical record, you just click new event and it pulls up the form, which is also, you can see over here in your event details. So then I usually put in the name of the provider, let's see, Dr. Smith, and then you know, the location could be office visit. And then for the start time, you put in a date. Let's say, you know, June 15th, 2020. And if it's the same day, I use the same day here. And then I type in the summary of the record. Now, if I wanted to, I can actually attach the record here so that it's right with this note. So it's easy to get to um, and nobody has to look for it. Okay, which record is it that you're talking about? So now you can either save and new or you can just close it and it automatically becomes part of your event. Um, don't panic that it's not here. The way this one is set up is it's looking at current and future. It's not a perfect world for doing past medical records, but um, it will work. So if I wanna see everything that I've entered, if I go over here to the left side, I will see events and I double click on that and it shows me everything that I've entered. Now, if I inadvertently put one in the wrong spot, I can highlight it and I can delete it. And it will always warn me which is great. 
So, all right, so then the other program I want to show you real, real quick is this Legal Nurse Consultant, um, which is a proprietary software, but it's relatively inexpensive to, um, to use uh, or to buy. Um, and it was specifically built for legal nurses to do medical summaries, record reviews, um, that type of thing. It may give me an error if they have the access open. Um, hopefully it'll come up. No. So it gives you a uh, a console where you can add your firm information, your timesheet, your administration stuff. And I'm going to show you the case management part. So again, I have added in here Mr. Jones and the medical record management. And then I can add medical records right from here. Just push the button. It shows me the last one that I entered or the first one that I entered. At the bottom, you can see how many records I've entered. I can put notes in here. I can put any references I want to. Um, if I want to link a document to it, I can do it right here. It gives you the option of putting in your Bates number. Um, you can do lab panels if you want to get that detailed. And you can flip through if you want to, you know, keep adding. You just go all the way to the end, and then you just, sorry, then you just click add, and you can start fresh. It's a great, great little program. All right, so I'm gonna minimize that and go back to the PowerPoint for a second here. Okay, so we talked about that. Um, the other option you can do in terms of um, medical record review and chronology is have one custom built. Now, at Medical and Life Care Consulting, we chose to do that. Um, it was very expensive, but it allowed us to merge that um, product in with other things that we do, life care planning, medical cost projections, MSAs so that we didn't have to reinvent the wheel for those things. We just, we wanted it all to be uh, a seamless, seamless effort. So now that you've got all of your records into whatever program you're using, we're gonna learn how to identify the clues that are gonna point you to the missing information. Software can help you by filtering, and looking for gaps in time that might show you that you're missing some, some treatment. Um, so again, we're gonna go, sorry to keep flipping out of this, but I wanted to kind of show you real quick. Um, so this is our access database that we did. This is the one that came directly from the Axiogram with the template that said events management. So I want to um, sort this. So at the top, you will see these drop-down menus. These are sorting features. So you can sort from oldest to newest or newest to oldest. You can sort by the title, which is in this case, the way we entered it, it's gonna be by provider. One thing that's important to do is make sure that you're entering the information the same. So if you're putting John Smith, MD, if the next person comes along and adds to it and puts Smith John MD, it's not going, the program is not going to recognize that as the same person. So you can sort it by clicking on the little button, sort oldest to newest, and you'll see that now all of these are in order. If I want to see what my report would look like, so yes, it's here. Now I want to make it so people can see it. 
again, over here on the left, they've created some reports for us. And if I click all events, it's going to show me this beautiful looking medical record summary. And everything is right here. All the information that you put in. Isn't that nice? Makes it look very professional. Okay. Now, if we look at the Excel, we can do the same thing. Now, it doesn't automatically come preloaded with filters. So the way you do that is, again, you highlight that first line. And then you go over here to this little thing that looks like a funnel. It's your sort and filter. You click on that and you can sort A to Z, you can sort Z to A, or you can just hit the word filter and it's going, the program's going to figure out what are, are in those data fields and it's going to create a filter based on that. So you can do start date, oldest to newest. You can do by provider. So if I wanted to just find records from a particular doctor, like um, let's say I want to see just Dr. Smith, or I want to see Dr. I Stop Pain, and I click on that, it's just going to show me the information from I Stop Pain. So this is a great example um, of where your comments come into to play and how it helps you to find that missing information. So in this particular record, and although this is a very quick summary, um, I made a note that the history portion of this note was missing. So that clues me in that I need to go back to see Dr. Payne or Dr. Payne's office and say, can you send me the whole note? I need the history portion of this. Okay, so now if I wanna go back, I'm gonna show you another one that um, will point to you that you're really missing some information. I'm gonna do Mr. L Ike's cutting, likes cutting. All right, so there's one note from him that we have in our system. And it shows that he had lumbar decompression surgery and fusion. Okay, well, where's the rest of the notes from Dr. Cutting and how did he get here? How did Mr. Jones get to see Dr. Cutting? So again, that's a clue for you to go searching for other information. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my filter off and I'm gonna go back to select all so that we've got all our records back. Um, Okay, so that's what Excel can do for you. Now, the remember the legal nurse system that we took a quick look at? I wanna show you the um, reports that come out of that. So there's two different kinds of reports that you can get. You can get one that prints out your comments and again, does this look really familiar to you? It's based on access. It's the, the program that's running behind it is access, but they have done all the queries for you and it works specifically for medical records. Um, now, if you don't want the notes, if you're doing this for, um, you know, to produce to the other side or whatever, you don't want the notes in there. So, you want it without the notes. So this one is a version without the notes. So again, this looks really nice. It comes out looking very readable. You've got dates, the provider, your Bates numbers are here. And it's nice, it's a nice looking program. So again, something to think about. Okay. So we talked about all of that. So keywords and phrases. Um, so those would be things that might key you into that there's a problem with um, the case. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how that becomes important to you, either as a chronology person or as reviewing the medical records. 
So um, when you get your summary all done and you're starting to put the pieces together, now you're going to look at delving more deeply into the records to see is this information something that supports the case or is it something that's going to distract from the case? Now, the other thing we have to look at is when you're finding these, these missing information and stuff that doesn't seem to kind of click, we want to go back and we want to talk to the individual if possible. Obviously, if you're on the opposite side, you may not be able to do that, but you talk about, talk to them about, is your memory good? Can you rely on them as a historian? Can their information help you find these missing records? Does it align with what the, what's in the records? So if they're saying to you, you know, hey, there's problems here. Um, I'm not really getting relief from this treatment but everybody's documenting that he's doing great, then you know, you may that may clue you in that something else needs to happen in the case. So then you have to start asking questions about the information that you have. And the way to do that is to keep your questions open ended. So if you're looking at information from Dr. Smith and um, there's information in there, you're not quite sure, does it relate or not? Um, you start, you have to start asking those, okay, so why doesn't it? Not does it, yes or no, you wanna think more broadly. Um, you also wanna look at the pre-injury information. Um, are there diagnoses that are missing? Is there treatment that's missing? Like we saw in that, um, you know, when we looked at um, Dr. Cutting, you know, we all we had was the operative note. No, well, how did he get there? And so now we need to begin to look at that, what led up to that. Now, is the treatment related or not? That's a big, that's a big, big, big thing. So you have to be prepared when you start asking those questions to be able to assimilate that information. And is it something that you're prepared to, to delve into. Um, efficacy of treatment is, is a big thing that seems to be a problem um, in terms of whether or not the documentation is congruent with what the individual is telling you. Um, are, are there treatments that are being recommended that haven't been completed? Um, what kind of information um, is it that is it pointing to problems or is it pointing to solutions? So we're going to do another real quick poll here uh, to see if you can point out um, three red flags in our list here. These red okay, flags. we're getting some good uh, participation, and um, we'll give it a few more seconds to get a little bit more, but here you are selecting what would be a red flag um, that you may need to seek medical a medical expert or um, a consultant to, to help you with your case. We will close this in three, two, one. Very good, all right. Okay, that looks great. So comorbidities is a good one, all right. That's a good red flag, nice job. Um, notation of allergies. Well, that may be um, an important component of your case. Um, it may not be a red flag that says, hey, I've got to refer this to an expert. Um, treatment by a chiropractor. Um, while in and of itself, it's not a bad idea. Um, Mr. Crack Crunch treated Mr. Smith there, or Mr. Jones, and it was a reasonable treat, excuse me, reasonable treatment. Now, if you see, again, this leads to the next one, which is inappropriate treatment. 
that's a red flag um, to think about, do I really need to send this to an expert to take a look at? Um, if someone's going to a chiropractor for, you know, three times a week for six months and there's no change, then that might lead to need for an expert. Absolutely. Misspelled words may also be a red flag. Um, it may mean that there's a problem with the dictation. It may be that um, it's just a transcription error or, you know, something else is going on. So um, I think that's great. We're going to, you guys did a fantastic job with that. Yay. Okay. At the end, we're going to answer um, more questions. So if you have some questions, I'm going through this pretty quickly and I apologize for that. So I will, I want to get through everything here so that you guys can get information. So the red flags are, yes, pre-existing conditions and comorbidities. Well, those don't necessarily um, mean that, that if they're related, they may impact uh, a person's recovery from an injury or an illness, but it is something that you're probably going to want an expert to take a look at to see, is this the cause? Is this the effect? Um, of the situation. So, you know, a good example of that is diabetes. If you've got someone who, who has diabetes, you know, if that accident now makes them require more medication or because they broke their leg, they aren't able to exercise as much. Now, you know, how does that figure into to your case? Um, lack of treatment or treatment gaps. Um, that's very important. You can see on our timeline down here. So we've got all this ongoing treatment and some nice stuff. And then all of a sudden we got this big gap. And then the suit is filed and all of a sudden they're back to treating again. That is a red flag that you want to make sure that there's a reason for that. And sometimes it may be as simple as they were okay for a while and or they were doing some other treatment that you don't have the records for. So again, it's something that an expert can really help you with. Inappropriate treatment um, definitely is one of those things that if you don't have medical background, you're going to want an expert to talk about that. Um, so something to think about there. So now when do you consult the expert? When do you bring them on board? So there's two different times basically that you can do that. You know, if you're in the office and you're completing your review and your chronology um, and so that you do that before you bring the expert on, on board or do you do that after? Um, if you do that before, the, um, the expert's going to go through all of that record anyways, just so that they can look at the medical records with their eye and their filters. Um, and they're going to be looking at, at it with different um, meaning than what you're looking at it for. The benefit of doing your chronology and then referring out is that now you've identified those red flags. So you can narrow that expert down to, well, this is the issue and we want you to help us address that. If you send it out before, you may not really have a good handle on what you're looking your, for your expert to do. So whenever you're referring out, you need to be able to answer the question, why am I bringing you on board and what do I expect from you? So, the role of an expert, usually a medical expert or a nurse consultant, is that they understand the diagnoses and the implications of those diagnoses. You know, I mentioned the diabetes. Um, while that may not be caused by the accident or the illness, um, it may have implications in terms of healing time. Um, people who smoke, if they've had a lumbar fusion or a, you know, spinal fusion, they're going to have delayed healing. It's just a matter of fact. Um, so those kinds of things are something that a, a medical expert can help you with. They're going to be able to help you identify the signs and symptoms and point to misdiagnoses. If 
John was in a car accident and he hit his head. He's had a laceration on his forehead, which was fixed and everything looks good. All of a sudden he's coming to you and he's saying, you know, I, I'm dizzy all the time and my brain feels foggy. There may be a misdiagnosis, a concussion or something in there. Um, they can also help you determine, um, you know, what additional kinds of experts you may need. So in the case of John with the, the foggy brain, you may need to have him see a neurologist or a neuropsychologist to determine does he have some cognitive changes. Um, to identify inappropriate or excessive treatment, you know, you may think you understand um, what is appropriate and you probably have a good like gut feeling about it, um, but these experts know their field and they're gonna be able to tell you, yeah, that's, that's the way things should go. Or they'll be like, nope, they missed the boat on that one. Um, and the experts are gonna be able to show you clarity on your case and help clarify the story uh, and get you to where you need to be. Okay, well, hello. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the takeaways from today. So best practices for doing medical chronologies or um, medical chart reviews is to understand the information that you're looking at. You're going to be asking questions of that information and how do you answer those questions. Looking for gaps is key. That kind of gives you an idea of what am I missing here? Um, efficacy of treatment. And this is where you may have to bring the individual in to help you determine the story between the lines. You've got to be prepared for what you might find. Um, you may find something in the record that totally blows the case out of the water. Um, or you may find that little nugget that says, this is it. This is what we were looking for. Um, so the organization of those records is absolutely key. However you choose to do that, whether it's paper or software, um, you know, I showed you a couple of inexpensive ways that do create some really nice um, results. Um, but if you choose to do paper, that's fine too. Just keep it really, really well organized. Um, in learning how to identify your red flags and when to seek help, that's gonna be what's gonna help you and your practice um, really get the most out of your cases. And I am done chatting at you. So does anybody have any questions? I see a couple up there. So Gigi, I'll let you manage those. All right, we're shifting now to the Q&A segment, and we do ask that you use the Q&A feature in the Zoom da dashboard to submit your questions. Um, we do have some questions coming in, and um, one of the first ones that I do think the uh, requester found the answer to, but I thought I'd answer, I mean, ask it live so other POOs may have the same question is, is the legal nurse system program based off of uh, Microsoft Access? Yes, it is. It is, um, but the developer has has created all those queries for you, so you don't need to, um, and you don't have to have access on your computer to use it. Okay, nice, thank you. Um, the next one, I guess some folks are interested in the legal nurse system software that you pointed out. Um, I think what we'll do is maybe send that in the follow-up email to everyone is a link on where that software can be um, reviewed and possibly purchased if you're interested. Does that sound good, April? That sounds great. Yep. I was going to suggest that. Great minds. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, here's another question. If I identify red flags, how do I know what type of expert to use? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing where it may be uh, a good idea to bring like a nurse consultant on um, who can help you to figure out what kinds of experts you're going to need. Um, you know, it, it might be, like I said, maybe a neuropsychologist or maybe you need a psychiatrist um, or maybe it's uh, this, you know, this type of doctor. Um, but the, the nurse brings to you um, kind of a more diverse medical background. 
that um, a doctor in a specific area may not have that full handle. So um, usually consulting with a nurse, a legal nurse, or, um, you know, somebody like us, we can help direct you to what you need. Thanks. And this here's another one that we actually got in chat, and I'm going to share it just so you can speak to it. But um, Valerie mentioned that sometimes a red flag is a prior injury of the same body part. Um, do you want to speak to that as, as it pertains to maybe comorbidities or pre-existing injuries as a red flag? Yes, absolutely. That's a great one. Um, so many times people do have pre-existing injuries. Um, you know, a back that has been kind of nagging them here and there. Um, so how do you know, is this is this a new thing or is this an exacerbation? Um, so that's where, again, where it helps to kind of have the, you might have to go back and request some of those pre-injury uh, records so that you can tease out the, where were they at at the time of the accident? And if you're not feeling comfortable with that, then it may be the time to send it over to an expert who can say, oh yeah, well, they were able to do X, Y, and Z. They were on these medications and now they've gone to this level. Now you're looking at more interventions and they need uh, additional medications. They're not able to do these things anymore. So, you know, it depends on the situation, but that's very common to see injuries to the same body parts. Thanks. Um, another question is, how do you make your timelines? And I am happy to share a resource, but if you have another one, April, um, you can share it too. This is for Marianne. And there is a software called LucidChart um, that you can purchase. And it allows you to make kind of that timeline where you're looking as uh, April showed in her example. That's one option. Um, April, do you want to share maybe another if you have one? Um, I actually don't have one that I, I particularly use, but this is a great one. You can see I pulled the, the um, timeline slide back up yeah. for you to look at, but yeah. So this is done using a software called LucidChart, if you're interested. Um, for all of those who are asking, is a copy of the PowerPoint going to be available? What we do do is we'll send you a link to an on-demand playback. So um, you can watch this webinar as many times as you'd like, and hopefully that'll be a helpful resource um, in your practice and what you do. Um, it looks like also Linda is sharing that in a pinch, Adobe has a timeline feature in the Adobe Pro. Uh, so we don't use that here at MLCC, but we'll, we, um, are happy to share that resource. Thank you, Linda, for sharing that. Um, another question that we have is, I have a diagnosis that I don't really understand and the internet has conflicting information. Um, I guess the assumption is, yes, should this go to an expert? What are your thoughts there on using the internet for diagnoses research? Well, you know, if the internet says it's so, then it must be. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of misinformation, but there's also a lot of great information out there. Um, so, you know, my feeling is the best bet is to get an expert um, that knows about that diagnosis that can help you work through it. Because a lot of times there's some extenuating circumstances that the internet isn't going to know about and that you don't have the opportunity to question them about. Whereas an expert you can really work with and help to get that clarity that you need around those, you know, strange diagnoses. Awesome, thank you for that one. Um, we also have another question and this is, where do you find a nurse consultant? <laughs> well, since you asked, <laughs> um, we are uh, medical life care, well, medical and life care consulting. We have uh, consultants on board. Um, this is our contact information. Um, but we also there are um, different organizations that have consultants listed. You can go to expert sites. Um, although you know anybody who pays money can be on that. Um, there are organizations that uh, offer certifications that have. Um, 
lists usually on their web pages of experts in your area, um, you know, like the AANLCP, which is the American Association of Nurse Life Care Planners. They have, um, you know, a listing on their web page. You can search by um, state, and I believe the legal nurse consultants have a similar uh, thing on their site. So, you know, there's there's there are resources out there. Okay, awesome. We have another question. Do you ever work with pro se plaintiffs? Um, I have never worked with it. I have heard of it, but I have not. So I can't really speak to that, sorry. All right. So we'll give it some time for a few more questions to roll in. Again, um, we will send out a email follow-up once the uh, presentation is available for on-demand playback. Um, here's a question from Benjamin. He says, are there any advantages to access over Excel? Um, uh, yeah, I would say access handles larger amounts of information much more readily than Excel does. Um, and it's also built more toward um, text related data versus Excel, which is was really primarily built for numbers. Um, you can you can fudge with it and make it work for text and they've come a long way since the, the program first came out. But access does um, handle, you know, non-numeric data very well. All right, awesome. Uh, any more questions rolling in? We'll give it another uh, few minutes. Um, while we're waiting, I am going to just go ahead and wrap up. Thank you again for participating for today's and participating in today's webinar. As um, April has shared, and you can see on the screen, medical and life care consulting is a full service. Uh, nurse consulting firm who specializes in comprehensive life care planning, medical cost projections, life care plan projections. Um, we have a really cool product called Future Estimates of Care if you're looking for something a little bit more narrow. In addition to providing Medicare set-aside allocation services and of course medical chart reviews and chronologies. Uh, on the screen you'll see our website which we do invite you to visit. We host webinars um, maybe about quarter we also have a really great publication called Insights, where we're um, sharing case studies and thought leadership on a lot of different areas, in particular to medical legal services. Um, also, if you have specific questions for April, we do invite you to send her an email directly. She's happy to do a consultation. They're always complimentary. And her email is on the screen, a pettengill at medicalandlifecare.com. And you can also call our office if you'd like to schedule a consultation with some of our other uh, legal, uh, excuse me, nurse consultants. So um, it looks like we don't have any further questions, so we will conclude today's webinar. We're right on time. Again, we thank you for your participation, and we wish you a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.